Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my dear friends uh, and students, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. And as you know, this is the DADM 2 course under the NPTEL MOOC series, DADM means the data analysis and decision making 2. And as you know, in this whole course, we will be discussing the non-parametric methods of decision making, multi attribute utility theory, optimization, multi criteria optimization. Uh, not from hardcore mathematics, but more from a uh, subjective point of view, how you use AHP, ANP, Topsys, Electra and all these methods. So, initially we consider utility theory in a very simplistic sense, then we went into decision trees and then um, uh, decision trees we are doing now, then we did into the formulation of DA, we will come back to DA later on. So, let me continue we are discussing the concepts of decision trees and as you know this would be the 19th lecture of uh, which will be in the fourth week uh, and each week there are five lectures each lecture being for five uh, half an hour and after each week we have assignments. So, we have already completed as I speak you must have completed three assignments. So, we will be going to the fourth assignment after the end of the 20th lecture. So, if you remember uh, where we stopped the last day we are considering the different types of trying to find out the present value of the amount of money which you obtained. So, for the decision tree if you remember for high and low demand I would not go into the details of the background again, but for high and low demand you are getting 30 million per year for the coming 20 years and for low demand you got 20 millions per year for the coming 20 years and based on that. I will just use the highlighter based on that you found out there were two arms. So, with the 60 percent probability the high demand 30 was the value per year and these were if you remember this was the first year um, interest rate. So, if you got uh, you obtain 30 million after one year then the present value of that money would be 30 divided by the one which is marked in yellow. I should not mark in this in yellow, let me remove it. So, and then if you obtain another 30 million after um, uh, uh, 2 years, so that would be divided by 8 to 8. So, that would be divided by 1 plus r to the power square, means square means 2 years. Similarly, if you obtained um, another 30 after 3 years, it will be divided by an amount which is not mentioned here. And if you continue here, and if you obtained 30 million after 20 years, because that was the time frame, then the whole amount of value which you will get would be 30 million divided by 1 plus r to the power 20. Similarly, you would use the same logic if, if I go for the low demand then the low demand probability is 40 percent. I am not marking it, I am just highlighting it uh, with my or trying to point it out with the electronic pointer. 40 percent, 20 million per year. Similarly, you will follow the same concept. After one year, if you got 30, you will divide it by 1 plus r to the power 1. If you got another 20, sorry, 20 million after 2 years, so you will divide it by 1 plus r to the power square and continue doing it till the last term which is after 20 years, if you got 20 millions, you will divide by 1 plus r to the power 20. So, this is exactly the same concept which you used to rank the decisions in utility theory. So, obviously, you can use other methods also. So, the net value comes out to be 194, I will just mark it 194. Now, I would in this uh, lecture, I will go back and forth with the calculation and the diagram. Uh, so, it will be easy for you to understand. So, this is the first time I am doing it 
for any of the courses which are taught because they, they were all going in a sequential manner one slide after other, but in this case because the diagram is so huge. So, I had to make it in a um, uh, in this uh, word document converted into PDF. So, let me go to back to the diagram. So, this is one what we considered 30 millions per year for 20 years, 20 million per year for 20 years, probability 60 percent, 40 percent for high demand and low demand. Now, that value if you calculated it, it come, came out to be about 194. Now, 194 was the money coming back to in your pocket, but then you should ask that did you invest something to, to generate these revenues? The answer is yes, because if you note this 150 million rupees or yens or dollars whatever it is was basically for setting up the actual plant so, and other step was do nothing that means stop the production. So, if you consider 150 as the value which went out of pocket that is why it is it is shown in a red color and others which are coming inside your pocket coming back to you positive being blue in color. So, if you consider this 150, so the expected value of the net flow both revenues and, and, and cost being 194.2 which is coming from here and this 150 is the value which is the cost which you incur for setting up the plant. So, the total value comes out to be about 44.2, I will mention it 44. So, now this 44 which you are which you have which is positive you should consider with respect to what. So, let me again go back to the diagram. So, this total arm let me use uh, the color black, so it will be easy for me to. So, this total decision is 44, I am not using the decimals oh, in order to make it uh, a little bit more clear, let me put it 44 as, as blue one or the so, this is 44, so this is a positive one. Now, if you come here to the other arm, so what is the value? You do nothing, that means the value would be 0, so I will put a 0 here. So, you will compare 44 plus with respect to 0 and then consider that the actual decision which you will take in this case would be you would never go into this, this direction, I am just uh, putting a cross, cross means that you would never go. So, obviously, your actual decision would be the one where you will set up the plant and go for high demand, low demand values of 30 and 20 as shown. Now, at this stage when you take a decision, your net value is comparison between 44 and 0. So, let me come here. So, D 2 1 is 44, D 2 2 is 0. So, as d 2 1 the arm which is giving you 44 is more than the arm which is giving you a net present value of, of 0. So, obviously, d 2 1 will be selected. Now, when you have reached d 2 1, you are here. So, this is 44. Now, this 44 when you consider you will basically find out that what is the net present value or the expected value at c 1. Now, when you coming comparing C 1, there are two arms already, one is that 44 with a probability of 0 0.7, 70 percent and another thing you do nothing with a probability of 0 0.3. So, obviously, the your actual expected value at C 1, I should mark this as C 1 and this is C 2. C 1 and C 2 would be such that the expected value of C 1 would be 44, I am again ignoring the decimal 44 into 70. 0.7 and 0 into 0.3. So, hence the expected value at this level would be like this 44 into 0.7 and 0.3 which is the probability in 0 because 0 is, is the value for which you do nothing. So, the expected value uh, at C 1 is 30.9 which is 31. Now, when it is 31, then again you go back. So, you I am just going back and forth in the calculation and diagram. So, this is 31 at this stage and okay, this should be positive. So, let me remove it. So, this is positive. So, this is 31 
and obviously this value is 0, this value is uh, 0. So, till now if I use I have taken this path. and what comes out to be high demand and low demand will come later on. So, the hashed one is the path which you will take. Now, when you come to C 1 to arrive at C 1 you will find out that going if I take the route D 1 1. So, what is the actual cost? Cost means what is the amount of money which you may have spent. So, if you remember for a pilot production and test marketing you have to invest 20 millions. So, this 31 revenues should be adjusted correspondingly to the value of 20 million already spent when you have done the test marketing. So, let us go back. So, at D 1, 31 you have already obtained as a revenue, 20 was negative. So, technically this is blue, this is blue and this is red because it is minus. So, the total value which comes out to be 10.9 which is 11. So, this is the value which is positive. So, you will now you again compare 10.9 which is the value here So, 10.9 will be considered against the value of 0. So, at D 1 you will compare 10.9 which is the positive for the upper arm with respect to the value of 0 where you do nothing. So, obviously again you will see that you will take this decision that means you do the test marketing pilot plant then you basically uh, with probability 70 percent go for building up this factory spend 150 million and then see either a high demand or a low demand with probability 60 percent and 40 percent. So, the, the whole arm which you will consider let me highlight it using blue. So, this will be the arm. And it can be either high or low, they can be other arms also, but this is a very simplistic one. So, hence you will to pick, take that arm. Now, I will go into second example. Okay, before I go to the second example, there would have been many queries. So, let me and probable queries which come up in class. One would be why do we take, I will come to the diagram, so it will be easy for me to explain. Well, number one question can be that this 30 million which you are getting may not be same for each year for 20 years, right it may not be same, it may change from year to year point 1. Point number 2 is that this 20 million also may, may not be for a low demand may not be same from year to year, it may be on a decreasing trend I agree. So, this can also change. Third question would be why consider 20 years uh, as high and low demand time frame for both uh, 60 percent and 40 percent, yes that is true high demand can be say for example, 20 years, low demand can be say for example, 15 years that is also agreed. Fourth point would be why do we take the interest rate as same for both this high and low demand, yes we agree that the interest rate can be different for high demand and low demand. The fifth can be why do we consider the interest rate to be fixed for each and every year, like it can be R 1, R 2, R 3, R 4 correspondingly to the fact for the for uh, so high demand. Similarly, it can be uh, say R 7, R 8, R 9, R 10 different interest rate for the low demand, yes that is possible we can consider that. Sixth one can be say for example, rather than having only high and low demand we can have high demand, median demand, low demand, yes that is possible. So, all the arms which you have taken rather than 2 it can be more than 3, it can be 4, 5, 6 similarly for 70 percent probability setting up the pl plant and investing 150 million, it could have been you, you uh, set up the plant of a bigger scale of 150 million spending with 50 percent probability, another can be you spend 30 percent probability with a 30 percent probability you spend 100 millions, 
and 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 with with 20 percent probability you do not do nothing so these these are the different type of ways in this case also they can be more than two arms that means you spend 20 million with a certain um, uh, probability and in other case you do nothing so rather than 20 millions it can be broken around three stages three stages means like in one case you spend 50 millions for a bigger marketing and empire plant with certain probability then you spend or you else you spend say for example 30 million for a lower marketing survey and lower uh, smaller pilot plant so all these combinations of of um, uh, arms with different probabilities can be done but obviously remember the sum of all the probabilities for for any one decision should always add up to one so these these assumptions we can also expand think that all the seven or eight different type of ways of assumptions which we have taken which can be considered can also be done for the second problem which we are going to consider now. This is a little bit more involved, so please bear with me. An oil company while evaluating the oil basin in is considering three alternatives, it can be more than three also, which are drill, you do a drilling, number two would be conduct seismic test. So, do some geographical test, geological test before you drill and that would cost about 20,000. So, amount can vary, but let us consider very simplistically is 20,000 and you want to find out the you conduct the seismic test to find out what type of geophysical properties are there for the soil or the earth level where you are going to drill for the oil basin and third option can be you do nothing. So, that means, they directly go into drill, conduct test and do nothing. So, it, they can be more than three also. So, let us make it simple. If the company drills, then it is likely to find the oil basin. So, if it drills, it finds it is dry, it is wet and uh, it is basically soaking. Soaking means you get a lot of oil. So, a dry well yields nothing while a wet well provides moderate quantity of oil and a soaking uh, well generates substantial quantity of oil. So, dry minimum quantity of oil, wet means substantial amount of oil and soaking means quite, sub, uh, quite a huge amount of oil. Uh, if the oil, so uh, let me again read it, a dry well yields nothing, wet well provides moderate quantity of oil and soaking well generates substantial quantity of oil. If the oil company conducts seismic test, that means we are going back to the case where the company does conduct seismic test. If the oil company conducts seismic test, then it can learn about the underlying structure of the oil basin before deciding whether to drill for oil, for oil or not. So, it conducts test, finds out the characteristics of the geophysical properties of the basin and then decides whether he wants to drill or not. The underlying oil basin structure may be of one of the following type which means that there is no structure, there is open structure, there is closed structure. These are the properties of the or geophysical properties of the earth sur surface or of the basin where you want to conduct the test. So, if no structure is found, then the prospect of finding oil is very bleak, very low. If an open structure is, is discovered, then the prospect of finding oil is quite fair and if the structure is closed, the prospect of finding oil is bright. So, it is quite high. Now, the oil company oily also knows the following. Now, this probability which I am going to state can also be given in another way. I have also given that in another way, which I which I, am, I want to make it uh, very clear to you, such that they should not be in confusion when you want to find out. Now, look at here what it gives. Let us consider the first case. So, there are two things. So, first let me mention the probabilities of various oil bearing states. So, what are the oil bearing states? They are dry, wet and soaking. The probability, these are unconditional probability, they are, are not dependent on any conditions given. The probability of finding a dry state is 50 percent, probability of finding a wet state is 25 percent, probability of finding a soaking state is 25 percent. So, un unconditional on, on, on whatever it is, probabilities are 50. 25, 25. Then I go to the, the probabilities of various geo, ge, uh, soil geological state or geophysical states of the soil or the earth crust are given as 
no structure is there 40 percent, open structure probability is 30 percent, closed structure is 30 percent. So, again there are unconditional, does not depend on any condition based on which you can find it. Now, remember this 50, 25, 25 and 40, 30, 30 would be coming up later also, why and why and how they will come up, I will mention that again. Now, rather than, so for this, for the time being, let us consider these are not given, even though I, I, I mentioned, I will mention, but consider they are not given, what we will do. So, if this structure which would be given, the structure of, of the of the probabilities which will be given to us is like as follows. So, also let, let us read it, also we have the following joint probability distribution based on the underlying geophysical structure and the oil bearing states. So, now we are basically finding out the joint probability of these two, two conditions, one is oil bearing states and one is the soil geophysical or geological state. Now, with this if I find out the probability structure it is like this. Let us understand it, it is very simple and if you remember the condition uh, unconditioned probabilities which I gave will come out immediately from here. So, on one end we have the oil bearing states which is dry wet soaking and on the other hand we have the geolo geological structure which is no structure, open structure and closed structure. So, if I consider the probabilities, combined probabilities then they would be given in each cell. So, obviously, you will have 0 0.32, 0 0.15, 0 0.03, then 0 0.04, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.16. So, all these probabilities which are given are conditions on two factors. So, if I consider wet, it means that it is both open structure and wet. So, if I consider this 0 0.1, so obviously, it will mean that is open structure and wet uh, oil bearing state. If I consider 0 0.16, it would be closed structure and soaking state. Now, if you remember I mentioned that 50, 25, 25 and 40, 30, 30. So, look at the marginal values that means the extreme column <coughs> and the bottom most row, extreme right column. So, the marginal probability of the states which were unconditional was given as 0 0.5. So, if you add up these values 0 0.32 point plus 0 0.15, 0 0.03 comes out to be 0 0.5. Similarly, if you add up the second row comes out to be 25. I am not mentioning the decimal, if you add up the third row it comes out to be 25 again. Now, if we add up the columns that means, the first column for no structure it comes out to be 0.4, add up the second column corresponding to open structure it comes out to be 0.3, add up the third um, uh, column uh, corresponding to closed structure it comes out to be 0.3. And obviously, if you find out the sum of the unconditional probability, they should definitely come out to be 1 as it should be by addition of the rightmost column and the bottommost row. Now, with this given everything is solved. So, if I ask you a question that what is the probability that it is no structure corresponding to the fact that is that is a dry oil bearing state. So, obviously, you will use the values of 0 0.32 and 0 0.5. If I ask you the question that what is the probability that it is soaking given it is an open structure, then you will obviously use the values of uh, 0 0.05 and 0 0.3. So, corresponding to what conditions are given whether it is open structure and then soaking or it is basically a wet structure or then no structure, you can basically find wet state sorry wet state and, and no structure you can find out depending on way which year direction you are looking whether it is a row or a column you will divide the corresponding cell. Cell means in this 3 cross 3 values which are there you will divide it by the corresponding extreme most rightmost column or the bottom most row to get the conditional probabilities accordingly. We will utilize this structure accordingly. Now, you can ask let me open the discussion before solving the problem, you can ask that what if we consider uh, uh, th three stage condition probabilities. That means, depending on probability of A, you have B, depending on probability B then obviously, you have C. Then obviously, the probability of C would be dependent on B which will be dependent on A. Yes, then in that case that will be possible. So, obviously, we will have the condition probabilities depending on states A, B, C accordingly. Similarly, can be done for, for, for uh, four stages that means, A 
uh, decides B, B furthermore decides C and C furthermore decides D. So, when we find out, so these are the um, uh, events. So, the probability of D would be, be dependent on C, which will be dependent on B, which will be dependent on A. So, this, this we are, I am reading the problem. Finally, the oil company also has the following set of informations. The informations are as follows regarding the net present value of the three states, which is the net present value of the dry state is given as minus 0 0.6. So, this should be um, red in color, because this is negative, if you are following the same norm. Net present value for the wet state is plus 0 0.8. So, obviously, it is positive and net present value for the soaking state is plus 2.4. So, obviously, is positive. So, we have the net present value. So, obviously, the second question which may come up again I am making it an open discussion that you could think that rather than having the net present value, you could have the payment happening after drilling the payment you, which you are getting after each year, then you have to basically find out the net present value considering the same concept which you used in the first problem, where you divide each and every year's return by 1 plus r to the power n, where n keeps changing that year 1, year 2, year 3, so on and so forth, you can find out the, the net present value, where r is basically the interest rate. Again, you can assume the interest rate r is changing from year to year and so on and so forth. So, it will also change depending on high demand, low demand, all these things are possible. Now, before I solve the problem, let us see the diagram. Diagram would not be cluttered, but I have tried my level best to draw it. So, let us see the diagram. So, I have just added the calculations first. So, here is the diagram. It is a little bit involved, but uh, let me go, uh, let me try to reduce the size if possible. Well, I am sure you can make something. So, if required, I will zoom in as required. So, here is the, let me go a little bit down. So, the whole diagram is, is visible to us. Yes. So, the, um, uh, the overall layout of the problem is like this. Again, we are drawing it from the source to the sink, but we will do the calculations from the sink to the end. So, you have d 1, which is given as drill, which is d 1 1, which is this arm. Let me use a different color to highlight it. So, d 1 is drill, d 1, so d 1 1, d 1 2 is conduct, I am uh, considering for this class, I have another 2 minutes, I will just mention the diagram in, a, in, in very generally and then come back to the solution. D 1 2 is conduct seismic test and for this a value is given is 0 0.02 with a red color which is negative and the other arm is D 1 3 is nothing. If you drill obviously, they would be dry, wet and soaking which is shown here. I would not go into the probabilities, immediate, probabilities immediately, I will wait, I will do it later on. The values, if you remember, of net present values was given as minus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.8, 2.4 minus plus plus. If you conduct seismic test, there would be no structure, there would be closed structure, and there would be open structure. Once you find out no structure, closed structure, open structure, again you will drill or do nothing. So, if you drill, again you have dry, wet, soaking and do nothing that means, in the same way as you are doing here do nothing. In the case when there is closed structure, again if you drill you have dry, wet, soaking, again I am not going to go and come to the probabilities immediately and do nothing is, that means in spite of finding out a closed structure you do nothing and for the final stage for the open structure, so that was sorry for the open structure and for the closed structure again you drill do nothing. And, and if you drill, you have the dry, wet and soaking. The probabilities, I will come to the next class and the values or net present value of minus 0 0.6, plus 0 0.8, 2.4 would be repeated for all the cases when you do the drill. This I have kept very simplistic and if you remember, I did mention these values can change depending on the time frame, the probabilities, the, the interest rate and so on and so forth. 
So, with this I will end the 19th lecture and continue discussing about the decision tree and try to complete the problem in the 20th lecture which will be the last class for the fourth week. Have a nice day and thank you very much for your attention.